Ciao! Did you know that Snowflake has its own command line called SnowSQL? In this video, you will learn how to install and configure SnowSQL, and the most important, when you may need to use it in your work. There's many ways to connect to your Snowflake account. One of them is SnowSQL. So let's start with the definition of what SnowSQL actually is. So SnowSQL is the command line client for connecting to Snowflake to execute SQL queries and perform all DDL and DML operations. So that's the theory. And you might have a question, okay, so what's the difference between other connectors then? Because the definition itself looks like we are able to execute SQL queries and perform all DDL and DML operations on every single connector we have in Snowflake. So that's the thing which I will cover in the next sections. But first, let's start with the installations of SnowSQL on your local machine. Let's move to the Snowflake documentation. Go to the connecting to Snowflake section. And as you may see here, we have a bunch of different connectors, but in this video, we'll cover only SnowSQL one. So let's move to the SnowSQL, click on installing. And here we will be able to see SnowSQL download page, but we'll click in a second. Uh, one thing worth mentioning is that the SnowSQL upgrades automatically itself. So you don't need to do anything here, but if you have the Linux server and um, you don't want the automatic upgrades uh, in your organization, then you could also choose the RPM package, which just does not support automatic upgrades. So let's move up to, all, to our SnowSQL download page. Let's click on this one. And here we just simply choose our operating system. For me, it will be Windows. I will just move to the downloads section. Let's click on the SnowSQL setup wizard. Here we don't have anything interesting, so we just click next. We then choose where SnowSQL needs to be installed. Simple as that. We click install and it may take a while. So let's get back to you in a second. As you may see, SnowSQL has been successfully installed on my PC. So now let's check out if the connection is working. So let's open up a new terminal window, mine here. And now we'll just type SnowSQL to check if it's working. And now in the output, we have received a bunch of different parameters, which we can use later on when it comes to, to connection. But now it means that SnowSQL has been installed and, and our Windows is able to see it. To connect with the credentials to our account, we'll then type the SnowSQL-A, which stands for account name and we will need to find our account name in the user interface. So when you go to the user interface, check out the left bottom corner. There is a bunch of different inf information here. If you click and then scroll on this specific account, you can find a bunch of different informations here, which is the organization, the cloud, region, edition and locator. But what's interesting for us is the account URL, which we'll copy here, just click this one. Then let's move to the to the notepad where I've already copied that by myself. But as you may see, that's the URL which we get while copying it through this option. So the most interesting part here for us is this one, which is just starts before the snowflake computing.com. So this one we take, just copy this one. Let's move back to the command line, paste it, and then we can check as well. We need to use our login name to, to login. So that's the one you should know already. I will type mine here. So that's my that's my username. We click enter, and then we should be able to provide a password here. We click enter, and we are here connected to the, to the database. The configuration step isn't necessary for you to, to connect to the uh, to your Snowflake account, but it just simplifies your life a lot. So it's recommended to to configure just a little bit these um, these values here to do not paste it every single time. So you will be able to type Snow SQL, and you'll just get instantly locked to into your Snowflake account. Let's move to the configuration part. 
so we will need to go to the place where snow sql has been installed so let me open up this folder for me it will be uh, local disk c program files and then snowflake snow sql folder and as you may see there are uh, three files in this folder um, the most interesting one will be the, the zip file which we'll extract here to to get to the to the config file so let me extract all of this and we have received an error that this file is used by another process so i believe we would need to close up the connection and to close up the the snowflake connection we would need to type the exclamation point exit type enter and snowflake is saying goodbye to us check this out once again let me extract this those files once again here and now it works without any issues that's great um so the interesting file for us is snowsql.cnf which stands for config so let's open this one up here we can see different options which which we'll be able to to use while logging through the through the snow sql every hash we have here stands for a comment so most of the file is commented just watch out for this and first of all we have the connections connections thread here to create a default connection we need to first of all remove those those hashes i will remove them um, in the account name in the region username and and passwords that's the the most basic as you've seen in previous that will be our the account name and and region so i will copy this one out and as you can see here in this file will be stored in a plain text so just be cautious um, especially when it comes to to password i will cover this one up here i will just type my password then i will save the file and we'll check the the snow sql if it's if it's actually seeing the default connection i've added my password and also i have opened up the new command line terminal because in some cases you may need to reopen this one to to actually work so now let's type out the snow sql and as you may see without providing the account name the username and and credentials it's working so just typing snow sql we are now connected to the to the database also moving back to this config file there is a connections.example section which we are able to define uh, other connections. This one we use right now is the default one, but we can also uh, name it, um, put here a different connection and and use it while logging into into the Snowflake account. Maybe maybe to totally different Snowflake accounts that depends on, on you. So when it comes to typing down the comments, um, fortunately for us, the Snow SQL has the autocomplete mode. So if we start typing command, it will help us to choose which command um, use. Let's start with the exclamation point. And here are the comments which can be used as well. We used exit before, but here are also different options like abort, abort the, the query or connect with a different, different connection without specifically disconnecting from, from this one. Um, let's let's go to the let's use database let's see what we have here uh we've got snowflake sample data let's use this one and always remember to add a semicolon at the end of, of the query because otherwise it will just run without the finish so st statement executed successfully as you may see i've just clicked enter without semicolon it did not work so just be cautious of this one. And now we can try to query some data. Let's use the customer. Maybe let's let's limit the results because it's the console, so it's not not so easy to, to read this data. But as you may see, we've we've got some columns, we've got some some data, but it's not clearly visible here. So the Snow SQL is not not really as good with to to read and analyze this this data just just to do some some ad hoc operations so when it comes to usage examples i found three scenarios when snow sql can be useful for example usage in in custom scripts you can build some custom scripts with use of bash or or powershell 
in in your local machine. It can be also the, the part of your automation process to, to move the data around. And also the, the most common one is to actually load the data into the Snowflake to internal stages through SnowSQL. And that's because user interface has a limitation of 50 megabytes per file while loading the files through the user interface. But there is no such limit when it comes to SnowSQL. So if you want to load larger files than that, then SnowSQL would be the only option. Of course, besides splitting these this files, which doesn't make much sense. But when it comes to internal stages, I will be also recording another video where I will explain what internal stages are. But for now, let me know in the comments below how you use SnowSQL in your work. Maybe you have some, some different scenarios when can be useful as well. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.